Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Tuesday edition of Video Clips. The first thing, just a couple of announcements. Um, the Informed Medical Consumer Series, if you're a member of Wellness Forum Health, the first two classes are included with your membership, and they are now posted on the member's site. So all you have to do is log in. You'll see where they are. And if you don't know how to log in or need help with that, just call our office. And then advanced study this month, really interesting book called Missing Microbes. Um, it's about the gut microbiome and how some of today's medical practices have really screwed up the gut microbiome and the impact that this is having on our health. Fascinating book. I think you guys will really like it. And that is the July advanced study series. All right, I have a couple things to talk about today. And we'll start with exercise and sleep. Physical activity can help you to sleep better. And some types of activity are better for this than others, according to a study presented at an annual meeting of the Associated Professional Sleep Societies. So the study included over 400,000 adults who were asked about physical activity and how much sleep they typically got per night. Sleep time was categorized as very short, four hours or less, short, five to six hours, normal, seven to eight hours, and long, nine or more hours. The researchers reported, now listen to this list, these are the things that will help you sleep better. Walking, aerobics, calisthenics, biking, gardening, golfing, running, weightlifting, yoga, and Pilates. Get better sleep if you do those things. Household chores and taking care of children associated with poorer sleep. Uh, results were adjusted for age, sex, level of education, body mass index. According to one researcher, just walking had a big effect, but some exercises were even better than walking, and those were aerobics and calisthenics, biking, yoga, golf, running, and weightlifting. Researcher Michael Grandner, PhD, said people who get physical activity are less likely to be short sleepers than people who don't get activity. Now, the study of, uh, it really identified a, a correlation, not a cause and effect relationship between physical activity and better sleep. Um, but, and there are a couple of things that the researchers didn't consider. One is that health conscious people who exercise might be more conscious about getting enough sleep and people who don't sleep might not have enough energy to exercise and so some of that was the case. But, um, but many of our members have reported over the years that after they started exercising, uh, that they started sleeping better, and it just stands to reason that if you wear yourself out more during the day, you're going to sleep better, fall asleep easier, and stay asleep better at night. Um, the study did identify a finding from other studies, which is that being active, I've talked about this quite a bit, cleaning your house and you know, weeding your flower beds and that sort of thing, it's a great idea, but it's not a substitute for exercise. In this case, the activities didn't lead to better sleep, and in previous studies that I've covered, you know, daily chores and that sort of thing didn't really lead to better fitness. You have to have structured exercise. Many people suffer from a lack of sleep. I mean, you can turn on the TV and watch the drug ads for drugs to make you sleep and know that there are a whole lot of people out there who can't get a good night's sleep. But um, I think diet and exercise, moving around more, is a better solution than drugging people to make sure they sleep well. So, uh, that very long list of activities, I'm sure you can find something that you would enjoy doing. All right. Now I'm going to talk about diet and neuropathy. And neuropathy is a painful condition that is developed by over 60% of diabetics. Often the condition will progress to the place where people have difficulty walking or they even end up having toes and feet amputated, all of which can really interfere with their quality of life. The causes are poor circulation and the side effects of poor blood glucose control. Symptoms include sharp burning and pain, often described as pins and needles or numbness, most often in the lower legs and feet. Uh, drug treatment for it includes aggressive lowering of blood sugar, and there are negative, kind of, uh, negative side effects of that, antidepressants, and drugs to address the pain. Uh, one commonly um, uh, advertised drug on television is Lyrica that um, is... Uh, uh, supposed to be good for diabetic nerve pain. The drugs aren't particularly effective. They have a lot of, they have a lot of side effects. Um, if you look at Lyrica, for example, um, the, the benefits versus the side effects, it'd be hard to make a decision to take that drug if you actually looked at all that information. Now, studies have shown that a low-fat plant-based diet is often effective for stopping and even reversing type 2 diabetes, reversing insulin needs, and comorbidity for type 1 diabetics. And Dr. Neil Barnard and his colleagues at the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine hypothesized that perhaps the same type of diet could be used as a treatment for diabetic neuropathy. 
they randomized uh, patients who had both type 2 diabetes and diabetic neuropathy to two groups. One group was shown how to eat a low-fat plant-based diet. The diet eliminated animal foods, restricted fat intake to 20 to 30 grams a day, and focused on fruit, vegetables, grains, and legumes. The other patients, um, these patients got some weekly classes in addition to um, uh, being told to, um, uh, to eat the diet. They took a B12 supplement. And by the way, this is the first study that was ever conducted on the effect of diet um, on neuropathy. The control group was just given a B12 supplement. They weren't told to do anything different in terms of, of their diets. Patients were evaluated at baseline, midpoint, and at 20 weeks with clinical and laboratory testing and questionnaires to evaluate pain. They, all of the patients were similar at baseline, except, interestingly enough, the ones in the intervention group eating the low-fat diet had a slightly worse case of diabetic neuropathy than those in the control group. Five intervention patients and five control group patients were taking drugs for neuropathy at the time the study began. Well, at the end of 20 weeks, there was no question the low-fat plant eaters were doing better. They had lost an average of 14 pounds. The controls didn't lose any weight at all. Hemoglobin A1C dropped in the uh, plant eaters, no change in the, um, uh, in the controls. Uh, Ten patients in the intervention group were able to reduce their glucose-lowering uh, glucose medication, and the control group only one. Intervention patients experienced an average drop in cholesterol of 12.1, control patients 2.2. Um, intervention patients also were able to lower their uh, need for blood pressure medication. But the big issue, what the study was all about, is how did these patients fare when it came to diabetic nerve pain? Well, the intervention patients had significantly better results than the controls. Electrochemical skin, conduct skin conducting in the foot worsened in the control group, but stayed constant in the intervention group, indicating that the diet may have slowed down nerve function decline. 81% of the patients in the intervention group reported complete remission of burning pain and improved sense of touch. The other 19% pointed some improvement, but not complete resolution of their problem. The patients in the intervention group uh, were mostly compliant and eating a plant-based diet and um, not so compliant on the fat, but they, they remained compliant on the diet. Uh, the controls really didn't see much difference in their diabetic nerve pain, so it was clearly the diet that was making the difference. So this is a much better way to address this problem because you not only deal with the symptoms, but you're getting to the cause of the diabetic nerve pain, which is the diabetes. Why not get rid of the diabetes? Then you don't have diabetic nerve pain anymore. So it, I've, I've always said that one of the benefits, and there are many we can talk about, of using diet as an intervention tool is that you're not just treating the symptoms, you're, you're treating the person, and you're not just improving the symptoms, you're improving the health of the person, and that's such a better idea. All right, that's all for today. Have a great one, and I'll speak with you again on Thursday with more news. As usual, pass this on to anybody who you think might enjoy watching it.